Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This one I'm going to talk about the electrical system, which a few of you have asked me for a while to make, and I'm sorry I'm just now getting to it, but here it is. A um, little disclaimer, uh, I'm only going to really be focusing on a 30 amp um, shore power supply type system, basically 120 volt system, and, uh, and a standard uh, 12 volt um, battery setup. Uh, if you saw my other video, my particular setup in my trailer is a little more uh, complicated with multiple uh, lithium batteries and solar and, and all that kind of stuff. But I do want to talk about what you're typically going to find in a travel trailer right off the lot from a dealer. And uh, the basics, and we're not going to go into anything too advanced here, just the basics on how that electrical system works. <laughs> So we'll start with the battery. Normally you'll get one or two batteries up front uh, of the trailer, and that's gonna be uh, a 12 volt battery, uh, most likely. And that 12 volt battery is supplying power to your 12 volt system on your trailer. So what this represents is two sides of your electrical system. You have your 120 volt side and your 12 volt side. So everything that's coming from your battery is gonna be coming from your 12 volt side of your panel. Basically anything with the fuse is coming from your battery. Everything with a breaker is coming from your shore power or your 120 volt supply. Um, so everything that has a breaker are gonna be your higher voltage items, such as your air conditioner, your microwave, your refrigerator, uh, things like that. Um, and then everything coming from your 12 volt side are gonna be your smaller items, such as your, your lights inside of your trailer, uh, your, your exhaust fans, your furnace, uh, radios, etc. things like that. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, now, if you were to open up this panel all the way, you would find this little box here at the bottom. And this box is called a converter charger. Uh, what this does is it charges your battery as well as converts the 120 volt shore power into 12 volt to be able to supply power to your 12 volt side of your panel uh, as well. So again, it it's a it takes your 120 volts that's coming into the trailer uh, into itself and outputs 12 volts to power the 12 volt side of your panel, uh, which also charges your battery. It's often a surprise for a lot of people who are new to RVing when they go out on a first trip and they're not plugged into anything and they realize my outlets aren't working. Well, that's why it's because those outlets are being powered off of the 120 volt side of your power system, otherwise known as your, your shore power system. Um, now, if you have an inverter set up uh, like I do and like a lot of people do, you can actually uh, turn that 12 volt battery supply into 120 volt and be able to use your outlets uh, for certain items and whatnot. Uh, but there's a lot more to go into there with uh, the type of inverter you should get and how much uh, battery power you have available to you to actually supply the amount of power you need to um, power things off of your inverter. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and talk about how the basic electrical system works. In the case of my trailer, because I'm using an, in, uh, an inverter that has a charger built into it, I actually don't need this converter charger. So you can see uh, it's not wired into anything right now. I basically bypassed it altogether and turned off its breaker because um, my power supply for the 12 volt comes all from the battery bank in the front of the trailer. Uh, you can look at my other electrical upgrade video where I talk about the battery setup I have and how all that works and the, the flow of electricity and all that. Um, so how my setup works is when I plug into shore power, that power is coming straight in to the panel here. You'll see that thicker gauge wire at the top and you'll see a 30 amp breaker. So the power is coming in from outside. It goes straight into uh, your 30 amp breaker, your ground and your neutral. And then all of these guys pull off of that main in input there. Uh, and if we look at our uh, if we look at our panel uh, cover, you'll see it tells you which breakers go to what. So the uh, top one is our main that we talked about, and then it goes uh, air conditioner. So your air conditioner here, your GFCI, microwave, uh, refrigerator, uh, the converter itself, and then the water heater. Something else to mention about your batteries. Um, keep in mind the type of batteries that you have. If you have lithium batteries. Um, you're a little better off as far as a lot of these different capabilities go. When you have a default like deep cycle battery or an AGM or, or you know a gel type battery, just keep in mind that even though it might be a 100 amp hour battery, you don't actually have those full 100 amps available to you. You have about 50% of that. 
The reason why is because the chemistry makeup of those batteries doesn't really allow you to go below 50% of its voltage usage. And that's when you start um, damaging the battery or the, the lifespan of the battery really starts to uh, decline. Uh, and where as a lithium battery, you have that full 100 amp hour uh, power capacity available to you at all times. Uh, or at least from the beginning until you start discharging the battery. You can also run lithium batteries down to almost zero without any sort of long-term effect on those batteries. And a lot of that is because the batteries themselves from these manufacturers, whether it be Battleborn or Renogy or Lion, they um, have a built-in battery management system, a BMS, which won't, which basically protects the battery. It won't let you kill it, essentially. It will not allow it to work if it gets too cold. Um, same with uh, too hot. If the voltage gets way too low, it'll cut it off as well. Whereas these older style uh, deep cycle batteries, your your um, your AGM, your lead acids, uh, they don't have that. They're just they're just boxes of power. And uh, when you start running them below 50%, is when you start running into problems. So even though the argument of lithium batteries is that they're really expensive, because they are up front, you're paying this higher cost up front. But if you're really looking at the longevity, longevity of your battery life over time, you're actually spending uh, less money than that because you're replacing these other types of batteries over and over again as they stop holding charges or they don't last as long. It's because they're being damaged uh, when you're not watching that voltage usage. And and a lot of the times that's not really the fault of the owners. They just don't know, right? Um, that's why I'm trying to tell you in this video. So maybe if you didn't know that already, now you know, um, you have to just be cognizant of those battery types. Um, it's also not necessarily as easy as it sounds to just say, okay, well, I do have a deep cycle battery, um, or excuse me, I have a lead acid battery and I want to get rid of that thing. And I want to put in a lithium battery because, Hey, I can use that 400 amp hours. It charges a lot faster. It's a lot lighter. There's all these benefits to it. I'm willing to spend that extra money. Sometimes it's not as easy as just swapping out the batteries and reconnecting those cables on top. If you have a normal default setup, like I explained already with the uh, converter charger, you have to make sure that that converter charger is actually set up for lithium battery. It's because the lithium batteries actually charge at a higher voltage than a normal lead acid battery or an AGM battery does. So make sure that you have a, a converter charger that actually has the ability uh, to charge lithium batteries because it is a different chemistry makeup. It does charge differently and you could end up damaging that lithium battery if you're not using the right kind of charger. In my case, the chargers that come with these new Wolf Puffs now, they have a giant sticker, you can't miss it, on the refrigerator that says safe for lithium ion. I don't know how you tell the charger uh, that it's safe for lithium ion. I've heard there's a switch for it, but I've looked all over that thing and there's no switch at all. There is some rotary switches that are kind of glued in though. Um, maybe that's where you change it. But I, again, for in my case, I didn't really have to worry about that because um, of the whole new setup that I have in this particular trailer. So again, just make sure that if you're gonna to switch to lithium ion that you're actually making sure that your charger is also set correctly or frankly, the right kind of charger to be able to charge those lithium ion batteries appropriately and not damage the battery. Now let's talk about different ways to charge your batteries. Um, I just mentioned normally when you plug into a power uh, via shore power, that is the normal way that is gonna charge the battery or batteries that you have in your trailer. The other way is through solar panels. And one thing I want to make clear, which is often confusing and I totally get it, but I wanna make sure we, we set that record straight is, when you have solar panels on your RV, the solar panels themselves are not powering the items uh, that normally run off the battery. All of the solar panels are doing is charging the battery or essentially supplying power to the controller that which then allows you to charge your batteries. Um, if you have solar panels, you most likely have a solar charge controller um, and that's what's actually regulating the voltage and whatnot from the panels to make sure that you're able, it's able to supply the right kind of voltage to be able to charge the battery bank that you have uh, on your trailer. Um, a lot of times I see people ask questions such as, if I put a 50 watt panel on my roof, is that gonna be enough to power my fridge? Well, that's kind of a loaded question because it's not formatted in the correct way. The power, the, like I said, the panels themselves don't power the items. The panels, just think of the panels as, as a, a means of charging the battery. So when you come into that sort of question, which is a reasonable question, basically what, what you know, you're meaning to ask is, uh, is the panel on my roof enough to keep the batteries charged if I use my refrigerator 
Um, and in my case, in a lot of the newer Wolf Pup trailers and even just trailers in general out there, they're all coming with 12 volt refrigerators. So that means that they're not even using the 120 volt side of your electrical panel. They are just using battery power. And therefore that's a valid question. Do I have enough solar to keep my batteries charged if I'm using my refrigerator uh, overnight, for example, if I'm dry, uh, dry camping or boondocking? And so what you really have to figure out though is not necessarily how big the panel is, but you have to figure out how much power the refrigerator is actually pulling from your battery bank. And then you will be able to use that information to size up your solar array to figure out how many panels you need, or frankly, how many watts of electricity or amps uh, those, those uh, panels are able to produce for you to be able to replenish the power that's being used by that 12 volt refrigerator. So just in general, remember that uh, the solar panels themselves are not powering these items. It's just providing power back into the system. Um, so in my case, and I have another video about this, my, my solar upgrade video and my electrical system video, uh, I have 400 watts of power on the roof. Uh, that comes down into a solar charge controller. That solar charge controller then sends that uh, voltage into the battery bank to charge the batteries and it regulates how much it sends depending on how much is being needed. So for example, like right now where my batteries are full um, and it, my, my panels don't need to provide all this power to the battery bank if they're already full. But the second I start inverting or pulling power from them, then it's when it kicks into bulk mode and it just starts sending as much power as it can into the battery bank to replenish all the electricity that's being used. Uh, from the batteries. Another question that gets brought up a lot is if I can power my air conditioner while plugged into my house uh, via a normal household outlet. The answer to that is maybe. And the reason why it's maybe is because it just depends on other stuff you got going on inside of your trailer. Normally a household outlet is a 15 amp outlet, sometimes 20, but typically it's 15 amps. So what that means is the breaker uh, for that outlet is only going to allow you to have up to about 15 amps before it trips. So there's a lot of things that need to factor in here. Do you have something else plugged into the same circuit as that uh, outlet that that outlet is on? And also how much stuff do you have on in your trailer that's gonna be pulling those amps out of that outlet that you're plugged into, right? So for example, let's say best case scenario, your household outlet is a 15 amp, uh, it's on a 15 amp circuit and you've got nothing else running on that circuit. Great, so you have an entire 15 amps available to you coming from your house. Now on the trailer side, let's say um, you have nothing else running inside your trailer on the electrical side. Remember your trailer can provide, your trailer can handle up to 30 amps. It doesn't mean that it's pulling 30 amps all the time. I think that's where the, 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 the um, confusion is for a lot of people. They say, well, I'm plugging into a 15 amp circuit, but my trailer is a 30 amp service, therefore I'm gonna trip the breaker. That's not true. All that means is that the trailer can handle up to 30 amps before its main breaker trips. So if you've got your air conditioner running, you've got a microwave running, and if you have things going on and you're close to the 30 amps on your trailer already, then yeah, if you plug into a 15 amp circuit and you're using, let's say 25 amps on your trailer, it's gonna trip the 15 amp breaker at your house. But if you have nothing else running in your trailer and you are only running uh, the air conditioner, the air conditioner is most likely gonna pull anywhere between eight to nine, maybe 10 amps. It just really depends on how hot it is outside, how hard that air conditioner is working. But if that's the case, then technically speaking, yes, you can absolutely plug into your house and you won't trip your breaker. But the second you start turning other stuff on inside your trailer and you start getting past that 15 amp threshold, that's where you're gonna start tripping the breaker on your house. So when it comes to troubleshooting your electrical system, if there's something not working in your trailer, I would always say start from your electrical panel here. You open up the panel, um, see if you have any fuses that are blown. Now in these newer styles, they light up when you pull a fuse that's blown um, that you can see right here. If I pull this uh, 15 amp fuse, you'll see that light turns on indicating that that fuse is no longer um, working. You can also look at the fuse itself and see in the middle there if uh, if that little um, if that little metal piece right there is is burned out or broken in the middle that usually means that fuse is blown. The other thing uh, to look at if it's your higher electricity items like your air conditioner and whatnot check out your breakers to make sure that they are all on. Now sometimes a tripped breaker is going to look like it's on but it might be tripped so Let's say it's your um, your microwave that's not working, it's not turning on. You come over here and look and say, oh, the microwave, well, the breaker's on. Well, just give it a little flip 
and then push it back firmly to make sure that it in fact is not tripped. Um, so that's where I would normally start for that kind of stuff uh, to see if there's any problems uh, there. The other thing is if it's a, something related to your 12 volt system, like your batteries aren't charging, let's say, um, you're plugged into shore power and your batteries haven't been charging, or maybe you're plugged into shore power and you have no 12 volt stuff at all. So your lights aren't working, your furnace isn't working, your fans aren't working. The other thing it could be is your converter charger itself. So in my case, again, you want to check that the breaker for the converter is on. And if you still don't have any uh, 12 volt at that point, you want to pull out your uh, converter charger. You have to take, up, take out a couple screws here. Obviously, make sure you disconnected power from it uh, completely. You've turned off your, your battery cutoff switch. You turned off your main. And if you want to be super safe, make sure you unplug your trailer from 120 volt altogether. And you pull out your converter charger. And on the inside, uh, most of these actually have a fuse themselves right there. You want to pull out that fuse and see if that's bad. Now again, be, make sure that if you ever open up this panel completely and you, you start digging around inside here, use common sense, please, and just make sure that you've disconnected power to everything. Um, in my case, again, I don't have this wired up to anything because I have a whole different type of setup. But you can see here that it would normally take 120 volts into it and then be putting out 12 volts. And you just want to make sure that you're safe when you go to look at all these things. But this is definitely where I would start in a troubleshooting um, process. All right, so just to recap, um, you basically have a 12 volt system and a 120 volt system inside of your trailer. Your 12 volts going to be your lights and all the smaller items, but your outlets, your uh, refrigerator, if you have a gas electric fridge and your air conditioner, that's all going to be running off of your 120 volt side, which you're only going to have available to you if you are plugged into shore power or if you have an inverter setup. For troubleshooting, again, start with the electrical panel, open that thing up, see if you have any trip breakers, see if you have any blown fuses. And if you don't have any 12 volt coming to your trailer at all and all the breakers are good and you're plugged into shore power, it could be uh, either the battery's gone bad, or the battery itself has gone bad, or uh, the converter charger has a blown fuse or it's also gone bad. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it for this electrical video. Again, very basic. Uh, I'm not going into too much detail. Um, if you want to see some of the more advanced stuff that you can do with the electrical system to really beef up your capabilities, check out the other videos I have on the channel, such as the electrical upgrade video and the solar upgrade video. And if you have any questions, of course, uh, leave comments down below. Uh, if this video is helpful to you, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to see more videos that I end up posting in the future. Other than that, that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.